Just how badly does Ole Miss need a win this weekend? You are locked on college football. Your daily podcast on all things college football. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College Football. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view every day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your daily source to stay up to date with the biggest stories in this, the greatest sport on planet Earth. This episode brought to you by friends over at FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. NC State is one of my biggest letdown teams this year, but it's opened the door for who exactly? We'll talk about that question and under the radar games in a fantastic week of college football. This is the Saturday that we have all been waiting for. It's a handful of days away. And we're talking about Ole Miss LSU today here on the show with Stephen Willis of Locked On Ole Miss joining me. And Stephen, just answer that question. How badly does does Lane Kiffin need to win this game? Like if he doesn't beat Ole Miss, what's the what what comes after that? Or if he doesn't beat LSU, what comes after that in Oxford? I, I honestly I don't know, but this is probably the most important game in his tenure at Ole Miss. And you have a situation to where Ole Miss needs to win. Because if they beat LSU after the LSU game, they have the same record that everybody before the season predicted they probably would have. They walk out of that game six and one, getting ready for an Oklahoma game that they're going to be favored in, get ready for an Arkansas game that even though it's in Fayetteville and can is prone to get drunk and weird, they should be favored in that game as well. And then Georgia comes into town. And Georgia, I don't know if anybody else is watching this, but they look increasingly beatable in a conference that everybody looks increasingly beatable. Yeah, I I think that the Bulldogs are a really good team. They are not the Georgia teams that won the national championship in back-to-back seasons. Like They are not on that level. I think that much is clear. They could still win the national championship this season, don't get me wrong. I do agree with you, though, that that Georgia game looks more winnable, especially because it is in Oxford than it did perhaps before the season. But this LSU game is fascinating to me because one of these teams, because we don't do the whole tie thing in college football because we have our heads screwed on, at least in that particular department, everything else is pretty wild and nuts. Someone's going to be four and one. So someone is going to have one loss. Someone is going to have two losses here, Stephen. And I know I'm stating the obvious there, but then once that materializes, it kind of seems with the schedules that these teams have remaining that, yeah, there's probably one more loss in there somewhere. And I don't think nine and three gets into the playoff. Is it overstating things to say that Ole Miss and LSU's playoff hopes are on the line this week? Well, Ole Miss's playoff hope was on the line last week against South Carolina. It, just honestly, after they dropped the game inexplicably to Kentucky, every game became a playoff game for Ole Miss moving forward. Trying to get to that Georgia game with one loss became of the most paramount importance. LSU's in the same boat. They dropped a game to USC that all of a sudden that loss is looking more and more shaky as we go. And they might have a few more losses on their schedule as well because they still have to play Alabama because we can make the joke about that. Alabama's given up like 70 points in six quarters and four of those are the Vanderbilt. Um, but there's still losses that are on both the schedule. That Texas A&M game at the end of the year, good grief. That looks looks like it could be something as well. So I think the importance of this game is super high. But the fact that Listen, the Ole Miss-LSU game being a top 10 matchup between both teams, both fan bases don't like each other. This is the game on the schedule that Ole Miss fans most want to win. LSU fans get really chippy towards Ole Miss fans when Ole Miss is good. This game just feels right. Yeah, and I I completely butchered the records earlier because I tried to do it from memory, which is never a good idea because I don't know what day of the week it is most of the time. Ole Miss is 5-1. and one. That's where I thought they would be in this spot. LSU is 4-1, and one, but they've played a combined three SEC games, so there's still a ways to go. I think in the SEC picture, it's a bigger game for Ole Miss because they already have that loss to Kentucky, but a lot of people were surprised by that. I wasn't as shocked. I was surprised because I thought they'd win that game, Stephen, but coming into the year, I thought there would be a stinker. I thought there would be a dud. 
but I thought it would be the South Carolina game. And then it happened against Kentucky. And I said, okay, I think Ole Miss got that out of their system. They go to South Carolina and I, I'm not writing that game off as, oh no, the Gamecocks just aren't any good. Like they stink. like, no, I think South Carolina is a pretty solid team. And LSU or, or Ole Miss rather was dominant in that game. The offense was good. The defense was great. What did you see in a bounce back performance? Man, I, what I saw is Lane Kiffin accidentally kind of lucking into a strategy of early 2010, 2011 Alabama murder ball is what happened. Ole Miss ran the ball twice as much as they threw the ball. They protected their defense in the second half because they knew if that game lasted eight quarters, South Carolina was not going to score a touchdown. And the only way that South Carolina would have a chance of winning that game was if Ole Miss helped them. So you have a situation where, hey, just get through, win 27 to three. It feels like you won 50 to three. It was just like those Alabama Nick Saban, Kirby Smart teams from like 2011, whenever the Honey Badger for LSU was running around those time periods. So that's what I saw. That was an unbelievably dominant performance coming off an unbelievably poor performance against Kentucky. You had a situation in that game. The Ole Miss defense played well, but there was two – honestly, fluke plays to where you do a duck and chuck down the field on a fourth and seven, come up with it after a push-off, and you fumble the ball directly to a tight end on the goal line for the winning touchdown, these things are not repeatable. And as long as Ole Miss plays well and protects their defense and does what they need to do, you have a chance to hold most of the teams you play to a relatively low scoring mark. And with the talent that Ole Miss has on offense, it's going to be hard for other teams to play ping pong with Ole Miss in those games. Our friends at FanDuel have got Ole Miss favored by two and a half points on the road in Death Valley, which everybody knows not the easiest of places to play. But take a look at this matchup at a glance, Stephen. You have a couple of really good quarterbacks. I love Jackson Dart coming into the year. I had not doubts but questions about Garrett Nussmeyer, and I am a big Garrett Nussmeyer fan in this spot. Do you think the Rebels deserve to be favored with how they've played this year compared to LSU? Yeah, I do, honestly, because if you look at this thing just at a 30,000-foot view, the LSU offense, which is really, really good, is really close to what Ole Miss's offense is, and Ole Miss's defense is light years ahead of where LSU's defense is. So if it turns into that ping-pong game, Ole Miss's defense is likely going to be able to get more stops than LSU is going to be able to do. And in the end of the day, FanDuel thinks that Ole Miss is probably on a neutral side about a touchdown better. They'd probably be about 11 points or so at home. But two and a half in the intangibles of Tiger Stadium, yeah, I can buy that. I understand that. And I get where they're coming from because in 2014, when Ole Miss went down there and was undefeated, Ole Miss lost that game. In 2022, when Ole Miss was undefeated and they went down there, they lost that game. Whenever Ole Miss is undefeated, they lose that game. So maybe that Kentucky game was kind of a blessing in disguise. Well, I think it kick-started Ole Miss, uh, gave him a swift kick in the rear to kind of let the players know, hey, you, you can't just coast. And they had a really easy schedule to begin the season. They were blowing everybody out. I think they might have just gotten a little bit complacent, not saying the coaches put them in that position. But, I mean, you're dealing with 18 to 22-year-old kids here. Like, that can absolutely happen. I agree that it could be a blessing in disguise. But give me your two biggest keys in this game against LSU, Stephen. And Jackson Dart's road splits in his career have been vastly different than what he has been able to accomplish at home. Do you think that means the ground game has to be a primary factor for Ole Miss's offense? I think Ole Miss needs to play clean offensively. That's my first key. Ole Miss needs to play clean. No turnovers, no going for it in minus territory that puts your defense in a bad situation. Do all the things that make it easier and protect that defense. And the other thing is, the other key in this game is for the defensive line for Ole Miss, which leads the NCAA in sacks right now, can affect Garrett Nussmeyer. Now, I'm not even talking about just getting to the quarterback, but make him look at the rush to where you can take that completion percentage down from about 70% to about 62%, allow defensive backs to maybe get a pick. If that happens, that's going to make the LSU offense very less effective. And you have Caleb Durham, the running back for LSU, just make sure you continue your run defense that's been going on. And if those three things happen, Ole Miss is going to win this game going away. You feel confident about the Rebels going into Death Valley, walking out with a win? Actually, believe it or not, I do. And I, 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 think I do it, believe that you feel confident. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It, 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 the thought coming up just a couple of weeks ago, 
that South Carolina offense that we just saw with Lenora Sellers at quarterback put 33 points on that LSU team. And if Lenora Sellers would not have gotten hurt, South Carolina would have won that game outright. 100%. And that going into Tiger Stadium, I realized that LSU had a week off. I realized that they have a really good offensive unit. But whenever I just keep thinking about that, I can't get it out of my head. Ole Miss should be able to honestly get a little bit right offensively. And if the defense continues to go strong, they're going to be all right. Now, remember, though, in the last two times that Pete Golding has gone up against the LSU offense, he's given up 45 points in Oxford, Mississippi, and like 38 points in that Jaden Daniels-Alabama game two years ago. So there could be a little bit of a problematic thing there because talent wasn't the issue at Alabama, but we'll see if he will be able to affect the game. Well, I'm sure LSU fans will agree with that assessment across the board. So uh, let them know in the comments, folks. Stephen Willis, locked on Ole Miss. Appreciate it as always. No problem. Go Vandy.